<laughs> good morning, everybody. How you doing? Good. Yeah, you're doing really good. You guys are inspiring me on a Friday morning. If you go on Facebook and you say you got a new haircut, right? And you post a picture of your new haircut. And what happens? A bunch of your friends say, oh, I love it. Your hair looks so wonderful. I love your bangs. And then one person says, I hate your bangs. What do you think about for the next day? Do you think about the 18 positive comments about how much they love your bangs? Or do you think about that one negative one? That's the negativity bias at work. So what we're trying to overcome is the negativity bias. We're trying to change people's focus and have them focus on what they're grateful for and have them focus on what's good and what's positive to try and overcome this negativity bias so we pay attention a little bit less. It's not we shouldn't ignore the negative because it still has a role to play. We still have to try and improve, but we shouldn't let the one negative comment have us rush back and get our hair cut again. But let's think about this example. So when I got my first car, I worked really, really, really hard. I saved up my money and I bought my first car. And about two weeks later, what do you think I wanted to do? Anybody guess? What did I start thinking about? Get a car. Getting a better car. That's right. So if we focus, if we use this method where we work hard and then we get success and we put off being happy until we're successful, guess what happens? We start to regulate that success and we start thinking about the next success and we're like, okay, I'll wait and be happy after the next success. And it's like tomorrow never comes, kind of, because we're constantly th are striving for more success and trying to stay motivated to get more success. And what we've learned now is that a lot of the time it's actually the other way around. That if we focus on being happy, naturally success flows out of that. So the whole reason, the psychologically, the reason that you do what you guys did this morning, those activities to put yourself to lift your spirits, is because it'll put you in the right mindset to actually get way more out of today. It'll make today more successful. But we focus on these ones. They're called the hero skills. You guys were selected from all over the place, right? To be here? So what kind of things did you have to do to be selected to be here? What did you have to be a leader, awesome. Anything else? What are, what are some of the skills that lead towards being a leader? Being outgoing. Being outgoing, yeah. Caring about people. Enthusiasm. Enthusiasm, that's right, so energy. So you probably bring more to most situations that you go into. And I would be willing to wager that if we measured you on all these traits, students like yourselves would be really high. And what's great is that they spell out the word hero, so we call them the hero traits. So hopefulness, efficacy, resiliency, and optimism. Now you probably know what three of those are, right? Does anybody in here know what efficacy is? Because I think it's actually one of the themes, indirectly, one of the themes of what you're trying to do here today. Anybody know what efficacy is? No? Okay, efficacy is maybe the most important of these, of these particular four. And what it means is, that you think you can change, that you think you can learn, that you think you can get smarter, that you think that you've got some control over your life. If you didn't have self-efficacy and you woke up and you were in a terrible mood, how do you think you would behave? What would you do if you didn't think you could change it? You would just end up staying in a bad mood. What would you do? Would you be more or less likely to go to school ready to learn if you thought, I was born as smart as I'm going to be, and I've got an IQ that's, say, 100, whatever it is, I can't really change that, do you think that you would put more effort into school or less effort into learning? Less effort. Way less effort, because why would you bother, right? If I can't change myself, why would I bother trying? So I think one of the themes that you're trying to accomplish here today is actually self-efficacy to show you that you can be better, to bring you together and teach you about each other and take risks and meet new people. All of those things come from self-efficacy. So it's one of the most important traits. We actually, so when we work with older people at work, that kind of thing, we actually kind of use the, the saying that we teach old dogs new tricks. Because a lot of people think that they can't learn new tricks. When you get older, you can't change your habits. Well, the same would hold true. If you didn't think, if you were, I'm 36, 
If I was 36 and I didn't think I could change anymore, what would I do? I would just stop trying, which means I might live for 45 more years not really trying anything new or doing anything wonderful or trying to be better, trying to be my best every day.